Hi, have you ever wanted to put a floating button on your WordPress site or, or maybe two floating buttons on your WordPress site? I've got a plug in for you. I'm Robbie Adair and this is OS Tips from OS Training. So you might recall a few years back, Google came out with material design, which was a look and feel. One of the items that came out of that were floating action buttons. Now, these buttons are a call to action for the user. So it's something that the user can click on and it will create an action, such as follow us on social media or contact us or call us now. Those are action buttons. So how do you get these action buttons on your WordPress site? Well, there's a really easy plugin to use called Buttonizer, and it makes it super simple for you to do. Plus, it allows you to have not just one, but maybe multiple buttons on a page, or maybe certain buttons on certain pages, other buttons on other pages. And it even gives you rules such as, um, I only want this call me button to show up during business hours. And so you can set a schedule on those. So it's very simple to use. Let's take a quick peek at how you set it up on your WordPress site. Okay, we have a demo website here that we're going to put buttons on. First thing we're gonna do is log into the back end of our WordPress site. I have Buttonizer already installed. You can install it either the free version through the WordPress directory, or if you've bought it, you'll get a download from them to install the pro version. This is the pro version that we will be seeing in here, it means there are a few more options than you have in the free version. So let's take a little look at the Buttonizer layout here. One, you can see once we go into Buttonizer, we have a preview of the site over here, which is very convenient for us because we can see the buttons as we're building them. There are button groups as well as buttons inside of those groups. You can have a group with just one button though. You can create new groups. You can add buttons inside of groups. Down at the bottom, you've got your settings. And then this is really handy. You have a preview. So that way you can take a look because you always want to make sure if you're using buttons that they don't interfere too much with your content. Let's go ahead and make a group of buttons for our social media. I always like to name my buttons groups and then we will start editing the button. As you edit the button, you will see the changes live in our preview screen here. Now there are three tabs when you edit a button, the general, the style and advanced. So this very first one, we want this to go to Facebook. You will need to have your Facebook page name. You can decide if you want this button to be on mobile and desktop or just one or the other. And we want to put our social media buttons on the lower left hand so we can move this the location. The animation First, you can pick the, st the style that you want of the button. Do you want it square? Do you want it circular? And then you can pick if you want this to animate. We'll do our other one animated. And then do we want a label such as like us on Facebook? Or let's just say like us. Then the style, we can set the color. So maybe we want purple because this is a wine site and we'll do our rollover in a green. So there you go. We can do, if we had picked square, we can set the border radius so we can have a rounded box. We can also put an icon on this. So they have a nice little icon feature built in so you can just search for the icons that you want. And what I really like is you can change the size of that icon. So maybe I want this icon to be larger and stand out a little more on that circle. And then you can put the colors, you can change, excuse me, you can change the colors of that label as this is the label, the text on it and the rollover text and the background and the rollover background. So all of that can be edited in here. On the advanced, we'll talk about this in the next one. The only thing I want to point out right now is that you can set custom styles if you want to add more styling in your CSS for these. Let's go back and let's add another button. This is going to be our Twitter button. One thing I want to point out on styles for this is by default, group styles are on inside of a button group. So that means once you set it on one button, they'll all adhere to that. So if you look down here and you open this up, you'll see that both of the buttons look the same. The only thing that we still can do separate here would be to change the icon. 
Now, the only reason that you might want to turn off this group styles would be, let's say I wanted each one of these icons to be the color of their social media. I would just need to unlink them so that I could do that. Now we're going to make one more that is our contact button. And we will make this button a call action. So you will need to put your phone number in here that you want it to call. There are a lot of options for this, but we're just going to use the phone number one for now. Our position, we're going to leave it where it is. We might want this one to animate, so we'll make this one do a little bounce as it comes in, and you'll see the bounce happen here. We will put an icon that represents phone so that they know what this is. Note, if you have the pro version, you can set an image as your icon as well, which is really handy, like if you want your logo on it. On the advanced, so we might not want this call button to show up all the time. So we can actually go in here and say we want a time schedule. When we add a time schedule, we can select what days, what times during the days that we want. So you could actually get very uh, detailed on when this button shows up on your website, as well as you can add exclusion dates. Maybe you know you're going to be closed on Christmas and New Year's. You can also set up page rules. Maybe you only want this button to show up on certain pages. You can also make this button not show up immediately. You can make it so that there's a time after someone's set on your website for 10 milliseconds, then it shows up. Or maybe you want to make it so that when they scroll, it shows up. You can also do an exit intent to make it draw attention to this button when they're going to exit. We'll do that. Let's just say when they're about to leave the window, we will bring focus to it. And for our demo, we'll say trigger every time so we see it. So I'm going to also publish this. So now if we go back, we have two button groups. This one only has one button in it. Let's go back to our home page, refresh. And we should see here's our button group of social media. Here's our phone button. If we scroll, you can see they stay where they are. And if I were to start to go to close this browser, you'll see the focus drawn to that button. We'll do that one more time. Boom. And it's that simple to set up buttons and manage buttons with Buttonizer. Okay, so that was it. It's that easy. If you want floating action buttons on your WordPress site, install Buttonizer, set up your buttons, customize them as you want, and then set up any rules that you want. It's that simple. And it's very easy to go and tweak those if you want to. Even if you change your theme and you have new colors, you can just go change the colors of your buttons and the functionality is all still the same. I sure hope this helped you out. And please don't forget, like the video, subscribe to our channel. We'll have more of these tips coming out for you. This is OS Tips from OS Training and I'm Robbie Avery.